Hey guys, well, I hope you enjoyed part one in the deep dive on the Molin Toolkit. Today we're going to do part two and we're going to be talking about the tools section. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, welcome to part two in our deep dive uh, in the Molin Toolkit. Now, uh, like I said in the first video, the reason why we're doing this in a separate one is that it's uh, it kind of covers a lot, right? So we're gonna look at the multi-cut, the connect tool, the target weld, and the quad draw. And if you don't remember where that was located, uh, top right corner, this guy right here, we'll turn that on or off. Okay, so let's start with the multi-cut tool. Let's take a, um, a plane, and we'll hit R to scale that up, and let's take a cube and we'll move that over all right okay so let's start with something simple we're going to jump to the top view here all right i'm going to hit four for wireframe mode and i'm going to click on multi-cut now as i hover over my model here and i mean i need to make sure that i'm in object mode so i'm going to turn off the multi-cut as you learn in video one we're in object mode turn that off hang on yep and i'm going to select this guy and then when i hover to this corner you'll see that the vertex turns red right so I can click on that and then, for example, click on this one and it will draw a line from that corner to that corner. But what if I don't want to go to a full vertex? Let's say I want to go half. I can actually do that. And I can just click around and basically freeform create a shape, right? And it doesn't really matter what kind of shape. So we're just going to go through this here and come up with something. Let's say something like that, right? Okay, at this point, when I hit enter, it will be committed to, and I will be able to do this. So then I'm gonna jump to face mode, and uh, hang on, yeah, face mode. Face mode, yeah, come on. And Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to hit the Q key on my keyboard to get out of that option, right? So now I'm in face mode here, and I can go in here, and I can basically, take these faces, the ones that I just created, and I can go in and simply delete them, right? Now keep in mind that there's a risk of creating end guns. I'm not sure I have any here. Let's see, three, three, four, four. Yeah, no end guns just yet. But when you use this tool, be careful that you don't do that, right? So that's one thing you can do with the multi-cut. Now let's get rid of this plane right here and let's apply that to this cube, okay? So I'm just gonna go in here and make sure that we're in object mode. There we go, and uh, this one's right, yeah, object mode. It's selected, we're gonna take the multi-cut tool and I'm just gonna go somewhere in the middle of this face, okay? I'm gonna hit Q on my keyboard, I'm gonna go into face mode and delete that. Now I definitely have an end gone, but you can see that that works perfectly, all right? Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Now, we're gonna go back a couple of spots. There we go. What if you go in here and with the multi-cut selected, you hold down your shift key? That will give you a line that you can draw, right? So I'm just holding down shift and I'm holding down my left mouse button. And let's say I let go somewhere around here, right? What that will do is it will simply slice that without taking it apart. So it added an edge uh, into that location. So if you hit four for wireframe mode, you now have vertices on these corners, okay? Cool. So that's that. But let's say you want nice, straight, and even lines in your cube. Well, with the multi-cut still selected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down Control and Shift, okay? And once you do that, you can click and click and click and click. And depending on the edge you select, it will snap and you will be able to add edges, as you can see, all right? Something like this. Now, uh, how do I know how far apart they will be? If you scroll down a little bit, you will see that the snap step is 10%. So it will snap to 10% of the total distance of this uh, cube from this vertex to that one, right? So if I were to go in here, hold down Control Shift, it would snap once here, here, and I would be able to go all the way over like that, okay? So that's how that works. Now, let's see, what else do we have with the multi-cut tool? Well, um, 
it's uh, basically an option to cut this in half and I'll show you how that works all right so I'm just gonna um, ignore these here this ignore back faces we're not gonna do that we're gonna look at the delete faces and extract faces though right so I'm gonna go back a couple of steps just so we got a nice clean cube thanks Nestor yeah okay so we've got a cube I'm gonna hit five for shaded mode and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard for a second so I get rid of that. Let's see, we've got nothing funky going on there yet. We're going to go back to our multi-cut tool. I'm going to leave steps at 10%, that's fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to delete faces. All right. Next, I'm going to find an angle looking at my cube. I'm going to hold down the shift key once again with the multi-cut tool selected. And I'm going to draw a line. And while I do that, and hopefully you can see this, uh, on the right hand side of my main line there's a dotted line facing to the right okay so if i point this towards something like this over my cube when, in whatever position that may be and i let go what it will do is it will cut that in half and basically get rid of any area that is in the area with the pointed line okay so let's hit control z to go back let's do that again hold on shift do something like this there you go Hold down shift, do something like this. There you go. Now that is the, um, the delete faces one. Now turn that one off and turn this one on, extract faces instead. And that one's kind of cool. So again, we're gonna hold down uh, shift. We're gonna left click and drag. Basically same deal here. We still got that line with that dotted line facing upwards, but instead of just cutting that off, what it will do is it will slice it in half and move that portion upwards like this. Okay, so you can get pretty cool effects doing this. So we'll do one more, hold on shift, pull, boom. We'll do one down here, boom. This is a very, very powerful tool. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that, right? So that is in the, for the most part, what I use the multi-cut tool for. So uh, let's jump into the target weld, here we go. Okay guys, well, next one up is the target weld. Now, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this one, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a simple cube here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on a face and I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna go to detach for the simple reason that I want this lid to be up here, okay? Now, uh, what the target weld option actually does is it welds the vertices together. So let's say the corner of this lid here to this corner. Now, traditionally, you would right-click, go to Vertex, you would drag, select this, and then you would uh, hold down a V on your keyboard, so W to move, you hold down V, and then you snap it, and then you go back in, select both, go up to uh, Edit Mesh and Merge, select your range, hit Enter, and you're done. Now, that's all good, but that takes way too long, all right? And the modeling toolkit is all about efficiency and making things faster. So instead, what you do is you uh, click on target weld, all right? And then you got an option here, target or center, but I'm gonna keep it on target. And you go to your first vertex, which is this guy. And when you click and hold, it will turn into a little orange circle around your vertex. And then while holding that down, you move it towards where you wanna go. And as soon as you get into the vicinity of that second vertex, you get this orange line, right? Now that's what you want. So you release your mouse and boom, it's connected. Now, if I now hit Q on my keyboard and I just simply go in and select that vertex and I wanna move it, you will see that they are connected, right? So they're automatically welded. That's kind of the whole point of that tool. So that's pretty neat. So again, if you want to speed up your workflow, you can go in, hit target weld, click on this guy, hold, pull down, boom. Click on this guy, hold, pull down. And click on this guy, hold and pull down. And looks like I messed something up at that end, but you get the idea, okay? I just wanted to go back to this step here so I can show you the other option. So we had target weld, which will basically take this guy down to this one meet up and weld, but the other one is the center option, okay? Now, when you click on that and you go up here and you click on this vertex and you hold and pull down, you'll see the same orange line, but now you have a green dot in the middle, right? 
Now the green dot is basically the center, that's what the option is called, and that's where the two vertices will meet and be welded. Okay, here we go. And there you go. So that's all there's to it. Easy peasy, right? So that covers multi-cut and target weld. Next, we're going to look at connect. Here we go. All right, guys. Well, the uh, connect tool. Now, that is one that I typically don't use a lot. I think the use of it is a bit vague, but that's very likely uh, due to my lack of knowledge on how to properly, you know, put that into a workflow. But I'll show you what it does and you can uh, make that up for yourself, right? So what Connect does is, as the name suggests, it connects certain elements to each other. So if I click on Connect and I go to, let's say, Face Mode, and I'll just uh, turn off Multi-Component here. Let's go to Face. So I got a face, and I hold down Shift, and I click another one, and another one, and another one. You'll see that it's creating lines here. Now I got segments set to five here, so let's go back a little bit. And I'll set segments to one. And we'll do that again. So one, shift, 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 shift. And it's connecting these by creating a, an edge in the middle. Now, what if I go in a diagonal, right? You'll see that it will stop there. So I can go this way, that works. I can go this way, that works or should work. Yeah, there you go. Didn't click on that one correctly, looks like. And you see that you can make a selection in whatever you're doing. Now, uh, I fail to see the uh, correct purpose of that. Not sure why I would do that, but that's what you can do. Now, it becomes more interesting when you go to multi-component because you can actually connect vertices to edges to faces. So for example, I can start here. So I hold down shift again, start on an edge, go to a face, jump to a vertex, go to another face, uh, jump to this edge, go to this edge, jump to a face, go to this vertex, and so on and so forth, right? Again, not entirely sure what the point is, but that's what you can do, okay? So you got the, uh, the option here to increase or decrease segments as shown before. And uh, if you have any really specific uses for this, please let me know in the comments, but at least you got a, a bit of an understanding of what it is, all right? Now let's uh, jump into quad draw and that in my opinion is a hell of a lot more interesting. Okay, here we go. Alrighty guys, quad draw tool. Well, like I said, in my opinion, this one is pretty important for the simple reason that the quad draw tool is used in retopology. Now, if you don't know what that is, I'll give you a quick rundown. Let's say you created a model, but this is a very, very high poly. It has a poly count of let's say 2 million. Well, that wouldn't be usable in a game situation because that would slow down the system or even make it crash, right? So what you need is a low poly version of your high poly model. So you can take your high poly model, bake a normal map and use that on the low poly. I know it sounds complicated if you're not familiar, but trust me, okay? So basically what I'm saying here is you've got a high poly model and you want to bring it down to a low poly model. Well, that's where you use the quadra tool and that process is called retopology. Okay, so how does that work? Well, I'm going to create a high poly model and we're going to simulate something like a character, but in this case, it's going to be a simple sphere, right? Easy peasy. I'm going to go into my attribute editor and I'm going to add some subdivision just so you get a better sense of what I mean by high poly, right? Okay, let's close that down. And what I basically want to do is recreate this sphere with new faces, but then in a less higher, uh, less high density. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to make this a live object so I can basically put tiles on it, if you will. Right. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to make live. Now, once I've done that, it changes gray and I can now go into the quadra tool right there and I can go in and I can start to point, uh, put dots on it. So let's try that. So one, two, three, four. And you know that normally you cannot do that on an object like this, but because we made it live, it works. Okay. So we've got four dots. Well, how does that help? Well, if you go in here and you hold on your shift key and you move your mouse into those four uh, points, it will become a face. You click once and now you've got a new face on your object. Okay. Let's see if we can work around this a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one and two and one and two. 
and you know it's nothing fancy and just for illustration purposes but just to give you an idea right let's say this is uh, I don't know the head of a character or whatever okay so we got this right so how do you connect all that stuff well again you hold down your shift key boom 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 you work your way around hold on shift hold on shift hold on shift 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 and shift so can you work your way up of course go up here one and two hold on shift and put one here hold on shift put one here hold on shift hold on shift you can even do triangles okay now the cool part is if I hit Q on my keyboard to get out of this function right you think that they're disappeared but you can see that if I hit W to move it and let me just try and get a hold of that here actually what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll hide my original sphere okay so here you can see that everything is still there right it's an independent object that you can select in object mode if we do that right there you can move it you can do whatever you want with it so that's what the quadra tool is used for uh, pretty neat I don't do that a lot because my process is slightly different but if you are into character modeling you will definitely be using this right so that concludes uh, the deep dive on the modeling toolkit uh, for the most part um, at least the parts that I use Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you got any questions or want me to get into a little bit more detail on some uh, uh, points in there, let me know in the comments. And uh, if not, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.